Hey friends, it's me, the Ebony Otaku, the well-rounded nerd. Gonna look at some more interesting things in my collection today of figures because she has everything. <laughs> it's just what I do. And these are some older figures that will never, never, ever, 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 never come out of their packaging. They can be removed from their packaging when I am permanently connected to God's Wi-Fi. And even then, I might come back and haunt whoever opens them. <laughs> no, I won't. I'll, I'll be too busy. <laughs> but yeah, there, there, there are some things that are just never going to come out of the box. These fall into that category. Neon Genesis Evangelion. Oh, this was quite the show back in the day. So for those who are unfamiliar, Neon Genesis Evangelion is, oh God, how old is this show now? More than 30 years. The manga's even older. But it's kind of one of those like benchmark anime. An anime that set a certain standard. Like mech anime, mech manga has always been a thing. This was one that took it to whole different level and and if my memory serves me because I was a kid a little kid when Evangelion first came out I don't even think I watched it for the first time until I was like 16 maybe 16 or 17 somewhere in there I had to it wasn't it's not like it was released in America I had to watch that mess via BitTorrent if you know you know <laughs> but um it was one of those anime like take Sailor Moon for instance Magical Girl has always been a genre it's, you know, we got the card captor Sakura out there. Uh, now we've got, like, you know, the likes of Puella Madoka Magica turning the genre on its head, you know. But the magical girl ethos has always been a very prominent genre. But when Sailor Moon came along, blew up the thing. You know, it just became the standard by which a magical girl anime are judged <laughs> to a certain extent. Um they got me, <laughs> you know. Evangelion was another one of those pivotal anime. When you think Magical Girl, most people think towards Sailor Moon or Cardcaptor Sakura. When people think mech anime, at least my generation, um, of course there was Voltron, you know, but Voltron's technically before me. I just happen to be a raised in the household <laughs> that is pro all things animation. Um, so I grew up on the Voltrons and the Transformers. Transformers is another one of those generation defining, groundbreaking staples of a of a subset um, within a genre. And Evangelion is kind of one of those for not just the, the mech anime, because the, the Avas are way more than just mechs. They're, we'll talk about it in a second. But not only that, but it started taking stories that could be told and going all the way in on them with the genre. One of the things I've always loved about anime and manga is typically they respect their audience. They don't make an assumption that because something is drawn that the story has to be less. I think that's where a lot of American studios make mistakes, where Pixar was really successful in the beginning. Um was because they respected their audience. They wrote stories that even though they have the label kids movie on them, one could be enjoyed by anyone. We were all there for A Bug's Life. You were there, I was there. You, me, and the Walt, we were all there for it. Um, but it was a really good story. Uh, it had really good characters, a great setting. You know, they've had a couple of fumbles. I mean, I was okay with Cars. It's not my favorite. You know, but we had like the Monsters, Inc. Just so, so many just defining animations but unfortunately sometimes in the the western sense because cartoons are for kids you know the stories aren't always leveled up the way they should be there's been a bit of a renaissance over the past 15 20 years where we've gotten good shows like gravity falls uh the adventure time steven universe rick and morty um lower decks that is now respecting animation as much as they would expect respect live action media because for a while adult animation in america meant raunchy dirty bad <laughs> it's what it was you know you would think something like the simpsons family guy american dad if you like those shows good on you i mean once upon a time i was into the simpsons um in more recent years i don't think i've watched an episode of the simpsons in a decade um but somebody's keeping that show on the air <laughs> but you know 
But the idea of what adult animation was supposed to be, the first adult animated sitcom, the first animated sitcom, actually was The Flintstones, at least by American standards. We're not talking about the rest of the world. Our first animated sitcom was The Flintstones, and it was made primarily for adults. It was based on The Honeymooners, and if you ever watch that show, problematic. <laughs> um, I mean, granted, it was just standard stuff. Um for the time period it was written in, doesn't mean we condone any of that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, the main character, Ralph and his wife, they're basically what Wilma and Fred were based on. He's, you know, this big, loud, work working guy. And she's a stay-at-home wife with red hair and she's feisty. And if she gets on his nerves, he had this line where he would go bang, zoom, right to the moon, and then show his fist at her and shake it in her face. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, Honeymooners was not a kid's show. Think what you will. I'm not going to make a, a, yeah, it, it was problematic. Um, but that that was our first version of an adult animated cartoon. But it turned into like everything has to be just foul <laughs> for it to be adult animation. But when you look at live action media, there's always been more respect for those types of stories when you involve physical humans. I really appreciate that in recent years there have been more animated shows, whether they're made for adults, children, or everybody, that I don't, it's not even inclusivity, it's respecting what the medium can do. It, it's not always meant, to, it has to skew completely one way or another. The first time I watched Gravity Falls, which was long after its, its peak, um, I'd heard about it, I was like, I'm not watching it. Disney show. Are you kidding? I don't do Disney for the most part. The only reason there's Disney stuff back there is because Disney bought my favorite franchises. It's not like I'm not anti-Disney, but they're not like my go-to. <laughs> you know, they own Marvel now, so whatever. Um, but but when you... I totally lost my train of thought. I gotta quit going on tangents. Um, but, but when you think about, you know, like a Gravity Falls. I didn't know Gravity Falls was a... what it was. Um, I had some downtime because I had a surgery and I was looking for something to watch while I was recovering. I picked up Gravity Falls, watched the whole thing in like three days. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And then when you get to Bill Cipher, it's like, we sure this is a kid's show? <laughs> but it it respected the audience, um, told a really good story, great setting, great characters, all of the beats you want to hit just to tell a good story. But Japan and their animation mindset was way ahead of most of the rest of the world in using the medium to tell really good complex stories and that's where Evangelion becomes groundbreaking because it was one of those initial just told a good story not not that the other anime aren't great they are no one's saying they're not great but it was one of the ones that became cult popular and it was kind of off the beaten path of what we thought of at the time. When I say we, I'm using the collective American way of what we thought of as adult animation or kid animation. It told a very mature story. Not mature as in the sense of, you know, got a whole bunch of NC-17 stuff in it. But mature as in you, you had to read. <laughs> like you had to have, like, like you would have to research some stuff to understand the majority of that story in Evangelion. And it, it wove such an intricate story. And I know they re-released it on Netflix. And the original director, he went back and actually made a few edits to fix some holes he saw in the story. So I re-watched both of them again, uh, I think last summer. And just to see the differences, kind of like with Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, there's my light. Decided to come back. Is she going to change this? No. Um, but... Um, when you look at Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, they were at least rather close together, at least in terms of a long-running show. But I honestly like Brotherhood better than the original. They went back and they fixed some things. They made Hohenheim a much more appealing character, someone that you could actually root for. I like the relationship between um, the brothers and their dad a whole lot more. Uh, I like what they did with Winry more in this one. Um, it, it was it was better. But again, respecting the story. So when Evangelion came around, I, at least in collective memory, it was one of those moments where we went, huh, that's a story. <laughs> that is quite a story. And this was drawn. <laughs> this was not people acting a thing out. And I think that's why 
a lot of the live action adaptations of animated works just simply do not fly. They don't fly because with animation, you can get away with a lot because it's already animated. So that the suspension of disbelief, you, if you don't know what that term means, because I hear a lot of like critics and stuff using, I quit watching critics because they'll make you quit liking stuff if you watch too many credits. Like I love them. Like I like a Ryan Holliger because really he's just talking about the story for the most part. I like the ones that, that, you know, tell you the story and break it down versus like, or, or what is it? Um, Oh, what's his name? Found Flicks. He's a good one, too. Like, he just tells the story. It's great. It's not really, like, bash the story. I think that's why Super Horror Bro is so popular. Watch him play, too. Um, because he doesn't get in there and criticize the video games. He just plays the games. <laughs> Manly Badass Hero just plays the games. And sometimes we just need to watch and enjoy instead of just trying to figure out how to nitpick everything. Evangelion is by far not a perfect anime. There are people who will say it is, but there's no such thing as a perfect work. If humans created it, there's going to be something imperfect in that work, period, point blank. Um, but what I do love is that because that anime and that manga became popular, this is right around Akira time as well. So I know some of you are going to go, well, what about Akira? Akira is all in that time frame. But the West started looking at animation a little differently, not just the uh, the Thundercats. And we, we stand, we stand the Thundercats. What a weird story. So I forgot this part. So Lion-O was like 12. And then they go through that portal rift thing, whatever it is, and it ages his body up to be 35 <laughs> or 20 or whatever it is. So he's still mentally and emotionally a child in an adult's body. There's that. And then, <laughs> you know, and then we look at the Voltrons. Um, you know, we look at Speed Racer, Astro Boy, all of those. Evangelion changed some things. It gave, I guess, permission, for lack of a better word, that you could do more with your story. People want a different story. They want a better story. They want a longer story. And I've told a big old story here, but while I'm talking, let's let's look at these really interesting figures. So this here, I got at Tower Records. <laughs> you see that dust come off of there? That's why he's in a box. <laughs> um, but I got this guy at Tower Records. This is Shinji's Ava. So talking um, Evangelion, just the story itself, this is Ava 01. There's 00, 001, 02, and 03. So there's four of them that we know of. Because um, there's that one that they duplicate in the movie. Like, it's a whole thing. We'll get to that one in a second. But uh, you'll notice it says 14 and older. Oh, where is it? Yeah. It says 14 and older uh, up there. Um, but the little summary it gives you, in 2015, so... 10 years ago. <laughs> Mankind faces a crisis. Um, unlike any other in human history to confront this threat, one young boy now boards a machine created by the world's top scientists and engineers, the ultimate all-purpose humanoid weapon, the Evangelion. So this is more than just a mech. I've talked about it when talking about the Warhammer Titans. The Titans and Warhammer are closer to what this is than they are uh, like if you look at like a, um, a Voltron or, or anything like that. They're, they're closer to this. They are part biological, part mechanical, part AI, part human brain, part spirit. They are all of those things rolled together. It's not just a robot that's being controlled. The other one I can think of that's like this would be Escaflone. Yeah, there's a throwback. Um, I love Escaflone. Although the manga and the anime, that is not the same story. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the same character. If you know, you know. Um, but yeah, so the Avas were created to combat a huge threat that comes to the Earth in the form of something crashing in Antarctica. Shinji's father, Shinji is the pilot of this Ava. He's like 14 at the time because, you know, it can't be a dramatic anime unless children lose, you know, everything they love. If we're not torturing kids. It's not anime. Iron-blooded orphans. Um, yeah, that, yeah, these aren't Gundams. Um 
But Shinji's father is part of the team that finds what's crashed in Antarctica. And there's a huge devastating whatever that happens that knocks out a good chunk of the world's population. There is a population center in what's left of Japan. And it's a weird city. Like it's underground, above ground. I can't explain it. You just got to watch this show. Because they're they're under, but they're... Oh, it's weird. Just go watch it. Um... But what crashes to earth is basically biblical. You you got to understand a lot of religious mythology for this story to even start to make sense. Beyond it being, ooh, robot shooty. <laughs> um, but that, that thing that comes to earth is literally called an angel. And at first, when I first watched this when I was a kid, I thought that was a euphemism. It's not. It literally was an angel from the skies. And the judgments of earth, basically what we would call Armageddon in the Christian faith, is beginning. <laughs> And those angels are judgments coming to earth. And part of that initial angel, when they found it and contained it, um, they called it Adam. And Adam is like this half-bloody monster body thing that is under the facility of nerve that Shinji's father, Jindo Akari, runs. Um, they keep him down there and they use their study of this angel that crashed to earth to understand what's coming next and to build something that could fight the angels because they knew that that was the first angel. There were going to be more and they were not prepared to do anything with or about them. So hence the creation of these so that as the angels come, they could fight them. But there was a catch. These, <laughs> since they're created from Adam... You see the religious connection there? Since these are created from the seed of Adam and they have a spiritual component in them, basically to create an Ava, human lives are going to be sacrificed to give this thing its spirit portion. Um, if, again, if you study religious mythology, there is, you know, body, soul, mind. Mind is, can also be translated as spirit or heart. So there's our physical component, our thinking component, and our feeling component all wrapped up. These have that. And whatever human was sacrificed for this to be created and imbued, that spiritual energy needs matching spiritual energy. In the case of Ava 01, before Jindo turned into the creep that we know him as now, um, Shinji's mother lost her life in the creation of this Ava. When you first see this Ava and Shinji first sees it, it actually protects him from falling debris. It raises its hand and covers him so that he doesn't get hit. Because they're underground. Jindo basically like finds his son, drags him out of school and says, Hey, come be a hero now. I've been an absentee father because the second your mom died, I quit loving you. But I need you now. So come here and pilot this thing because you're the only one who can. And it's quite frightening looking. Like when Shinji first sees it, he literally loses his mind. And if you, you do any kind of religious study, read the Bible, any of those types of things, whenever people actually do encounter angels or spiritual beings, they lose their shit. Because <laughs> it's, it's too much. It's too much glory. It's frightening. Like if you read descriptions of angels in the Bible, they ain't pretty. <laughs> They're not like just, you know, our idea of like the little cherubs being cute and shooting love arrows. Like they're, they're monsters. <laughs> and this is a monster. And Shinji recognizes it as a monster when he first sees it. And he freaks all the way out. And I feel like that's the appropriate response. Like sometimes in these shows, it's like you're, we are all just cool with this. Nobody's bothered. Zero people are bothered. I'm bothered. You're not bothered. I'm bothered. I'm bothered for you. <laughs> You know, but didn't freak out. Um, Jindo and the rest of them, I guess they're used to it. But Shinji has a freak out moment. But eventually he's he gets in. The reason he gets into that Ava is because another Ava pilot shows up to take his place who just came from a battle. Ayanami Rei is brought in to do the piloting for Shinji. And this is the state she's in. Now, she always hurt in this anime, let's be real. She, she's always banned to job because she's always having something done to her. We don't know it when we first meet her. But Ayanami Rei is basically a spiritual clone of Shinji's mom. And she is stuck on Jindo. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> I acknowledge that it's weird. It's weird. Um... But Shinji doesn't know that. He doesn't know who this girl is. But they reel her in on a stretcher and are basically like, okay, Shinji. Here's Shinji. <laughs> Since you are too chicken to go get in that big giant monster spirit machine, we're just going to use this injured girl. 
because she just came off a fight and she got bad hurt, but she'll do anything that Akari wants her to do. She just will. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I, I know, I know. <laughs> well, they nothing is shown, but um. So they're going to wheel her in and stick her back in this Ava that's not even the one that she is synced to. She has her own Evangelion, but it's being repaired because she got her butt kicked in the last flight. That's the only reason Gendo calls for his son. He's like, Shinji, I need you. Come pilot this big robot that's got your mom's spirit in it. Not going to tell you that part yet, but just, just get in there and do it. And he doesn't want to do it at first until he sees her. And he's like, well, okay, girl's hurt. I, I will go in there. All they need him to, to do is have his physical body in there. And they put him in the machine, and they send him out to his first fight, and he gets his butt handed to him, too. Because <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing. They just needed a butt in the seat. And that's what they got, is a butt in said seat. Um, yeah. But that's how we are introduced to the Avas. And then it starts the unfolding process in the anime of what are these Avas, what are the angels, why can only children pilot them? So we meet Shinji... And Ray, there's another Ray, um, in the same episode, we meet the third Ava pilot a little bit later. And that's going to be this girly pop, Asuka Langley. The light is not being my friend today, I'm sorry. But we meet Asuka Langley. She is from Europe, and this is her Ava. Red is her thing. I have her in these little figures. She's just in a basket or a box somewhere. Um, but they bring her in, and she has been training with her Ava for a long time as well. This one also got a dead mother in it. I'm sorry, I didn't write the story. But that's why she is able to sync with this. But she's been fighting with her Ava and training with it for so long that she honestly is a much better fighter and pilot than either Shinji or Rei have ever been or could be. Like, she comes in basically perfect, ready to go. There's some hiccups along the way, but that's basically our kid trio. They are all 14 years old. They are all children who have experienced significant loss, and basically that loss is the fuel for these Avas, which allows their spirits to be connected to them. The kids don't know this at first. When they find out, when she finds out, it break her down. <laughs> Like it, 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 I'm gonna warn you. What is it like? Episode like 20 or something like that. There are scene where she in the hospital and she hurt and unconscious, and Shinji comes in. I'm gonna just warn you. Like you might want to fast forward. Um, just fast forward. <laughs> um, it's dark. It's dark. It's dark. Um, but she comes in ready to go. But she got mad daddy issues. Uh, the adult that's supervising her comes with her, and, she, and it's a male, but he is at, he's above board. He's actually in love with the handler for Ray and um, Shinji. He's in love with, with that girl. Um, but Asuka is in love with, with older man. Older man is straight up with her like, you're a child, go away. That That is the appropriate response. We stand him. Um, but this was a really cool looking Ava. I felt very lucky to find her. Um... Are any of the price tag? Oh my god. I paid ten dollars for this at the Great Escape. Um, that's a comic book store um in my, my former hometown. Um Wow. This was ten dollars. Anybody out there want to get on the Googler and see what I can get for this now? I'm not selling it. But I'm curious to know. And you've got all of the Avas on the back here. The only one I don't have, I don't have a uh, Ava Zero Two. I have zero zero. I have zero three, I have zero one, but I don't have a zero zero. Uh, I'm sorry, a zero two. Maybe one of these days I'll be able to get a zero two. Um, but check out the back. This is what's cool. So this was something somebody collected from overseas. It's completely in Japanese. So this was never an American produced figure. The only English on the box is the title, which most anime are going to title in English and Japanese. Um, the box has gotten a little janky over the years, but that's a perfect figure in there. $9.99. That was a good find. I think I had found her. Oh, goodness. I was long about maybe 19 when I when I got a hold of this. So, yeah. Ooh, her box has been smashed a couple. Ooh, I put it back. <laughs> All right. So, her box looks good. So, we've got Asuka. Uh-oh. What did I do with my other one? There he is. And we've got Shinji. 
the glare. My lighting sucks today. I think I'm going to go back to doing my action figures over there because there's more glare at my desk. And one of the reasons I tried that out was because there's no window, there's no glare, and the light will stay consistent. So, you know, she's learning. She's learning. Um, but I also have Ava 00. Now, I have two of him. So there's this one, and he was 50% off. That's not bad. So his original price, I'm trying to find it. I want to say he was originally like $19.99 or something like that. Uh, it does say mass production model at the bottom. So this, there's a lot of these made. Um, I wonder how many of them have survived in this condition. Obviously, the box, you can tell it's starting to yellow. The next one you're going to see the box is really yellow. But this Ava we see in the first Evangelion movie. Um, this one is a direct, basically a direct clone of the Atom thing in the basement <laughs> of Nerve, um, for the final battle. You also see in here, here's why this was so cool. Let me see if I can get you a view of it. That is half of Ava 02. That's half of Asuka's Ava. In the movie, she get her shorts handed to her. It's bad. It's bad. Like, it's, she basically has one last big battle. Like, she, she gets out of the hospital. She's okay for 10 minutes. She has this big scene where she's, like, going gangbusters. There's, like, a whole bunch of this crazy white Ava, which this isn't this isn't a human uh, uh, a, uh, Ava that's on the side of us. It's on the side of the angels, basically. Um, and she goes out there to do her best. There's like 20 of them down there. And she she take, she gets the, what is it, the Lance of Longulus. Um, there's a lot in this. <laughs> um, and she, uh, she takes them all out. She takes out like 20 angels by herself. 20 of this guy. Like, they got wings and everything else. But her work was in vain because they are regenerative. And she kills them all. And then they just wake right back up. And then they tear her and her Ava apart. It is real sad, actually, now that I've thought about it. That was really sad. I have not watched the movie in a long time, in years. But now that I'm remembering it, like, holy cow. That was, oh, God, it was bad. Um, if you have feelings, it's going to hurt you. It was, ooh, it was rough. It was rough. But then there's this guy. This is um, that same angel, but with his wings displayed. Is the Lance of Longulus in here? No, but his battle axe is in here. I think the Lance is over with um, my standalone Asuka one. But $16.99 is what I paid for this. Again, Tower Records. That is a Tower Records sticker. Um, but you can tell this box is very yellow. Um, and it's actually the box in a couple of spots is trying to come apart. The reason I don't take these out of the box is I know that there's no chance of me getting these again. There's just not. Um... I'm sure it exists somewhere, but it's not going to be in the condition it is in this box. And for me, Evangelion was one of those, I don't know, like age-defining anime. It was when I made the transition from just watching the cutesy stuff. Although, if you watch all of Sailor Moon, if you make it past uh, season two, if you read the manga, it she, Naoko Takeuchi go in. Um, but this was the one that got me investigating anime further. Uh, I liked Akira, but I'll be honest, when Akira came out and I saw it when I was younger, I was unaware of manga when I was like 8, 9, 10 years old. I didn't know that was a thing. Um, I watched Sailor Moon on TV uh, as a kid, but I didn't know there was a whole comic book series that went with it. The, and as always, books, movies, TV, never the same. It's a different method of telling the story. Do not expect the three of them to tell the exact same story. It's not possible. Um, time constraints and what humans can do... For, just let it go. Let it go. That's why remakes happen. Um, but because this anime was so pivotal to me and got me interested more in anime, more in manga, this this anime was a catalyst for my nerdity in my teen years, basically. Because once I watched Evangelion, I was like, well, are there other shows like this? <laughs> are there other not just, you know, Hamtaro digimon -ish shows? And there's nothing wrong with Hamtaro or Digimon. There. I stand Digimon over Pokemon. There, I said it. Um, but are there any others like this? And then I started looking, and I uncovered so many cool properties. That's how I got to know Rurouni Kenshin. I was introduced to Berserk. I love Berserk. I don't know what they did with that new one. That new one is 
the story's good. The animation, I don't know, something's weird about it. Or is it just me? <gasps> um, I'm looking around on my shelf over here. Rooney Kinchin was one that I just absolutely adored. I I know they're remaking it and I cannot wait to see it. That's one of the few ones that if they wanted to do it live, which I know they've done some adaptations, it would work. Because there's nothing, what's the word, supernatural going on. Nothing extraordinary. I mean, he's the greatest fighter ever, yeah. But that one can be done. Um... Oh, yeah, so Berserk is back there. What's another one I got introduced to? Lane. Serial Experiment Lane. I've got her over there on the shelf, too. That was a cuckoo show. Do you ever wa watch Lane? Okay, if you're old enough and or d don't get nightmares easily. <laughs> um, Fruits Basket was another one. Fruits Basket sneaks up on you. It starts out real sweet and then gets real dark. <laughs> um, let me see. What else? You heard that door slamming. The the now 20-year-old is, uh, he's on spring break, so he's going to be noisy. He's allowed. It's his house, too. What else is back there that really was was part of my coming up in the, uh, huh. oh, Dot Hack Sign is up there. Let's see. What else? I can never remember the name of that one show. Um... Those main characters were Eclair and Lumiere, and they were like, it was out in space. I can't remember it, but I watched that whole show. I liked it, and I saw it at Tower, so I grabbed it. Uh, what else is back there? Oh, Amegami-sama. Oh, my goddess. Loved it. It's like a mini harem anime, but it was a good one. You know, so it, it opened my eyes that there was more out there than just Sailor Moon. Although Sailor Moon's great. We love Sailor Moon. Obviously. But I enjoyed that. I hope you did too. That's just something really unique and interesting in my collection. Once in a while, I like doing these just come be part of my collection with me. Because my collection, I know it's different. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff here that a lot of folks are like, how did you get that? I was born at the right time. Kind of like being able to afford a house. You, I'm sorry that you were born <laughs> in 2006. <laughs> it's not your dream. Um, but a lot of a lot of my collection is... I was born at the right time and I was in the right place at the right time and had $20 burning a hole in my pocket that needed to be spent. Uh, some of my collection I've given away. Some of it got ruined over the years. Some things I've lost. But every piece that I do have, I 100% I treasure. Um, it, is it all just useless plastic that sits there and gets looked at? 100% it is. And I love every piece of it. And I hope you love your collection too. That was fun. What else do I want to want to pull out and take a look at? Let the, let's see, huh? I'll put some I'll put some some thought to that. But in the meantime, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.